Hello friends, welcome to today's lab session. So today we will be seeing your next lab, which is uh, four bit BCD synchronous counter. So today we'll be writing a very long code to verify the four bit BCD counter. So you've already seen uh, what is counter and all those things in your uh, DE section. So I'll not uh, go much into the theory aspects. So to show you the symbol of the counter, it will look something like this. So this is the block diagram of the counter. We can observe here, uh, we will be doing a four bit BCD counter. BCD is nothing but binary coded decimal. That means you will count from zero to nine. And once it reaches nine, it will be again reset and it will again reset and the clock will be acting in sync with one another. Now what is reset? Whenever the reset is high, the whole counter is uh, reset. It will be say for example, it is counting from and say it is at the count five and the reset is high. So once the reset is high, then it will again move to zero. That is nothing but your reset as you can see here in the block diagram. And uh, clock is something, the clock pulses which we feed into your counter and using that the counter will be running. Resets are basically of two types. One is active low and another one is active high. You can use any one of them. There is no issue with that. Okay. And uh, going ahead with the block, this is this is what is your block diagram. How it will look? We are speaking of a four-bit counter. We are speaking of four-bit counter. Okay. And uh, the truth table of the four-bit counter is something. It goes something like this. You can observe here. Uh, you have a clock pulse and Next, you have a reset pulse. So as I was speaking, resets are of two types. Either it could be active high or it could be active low. Okay. So here the reset is zero and uh, the clock is high. And you can see all our bits are zero. Okay. So it, what you can see here is it, it could be reversed also. Say for example, when the reset is low, your count will start. When the reset is high, the count will stop. But here we have taken it as active low so therefore you can see the reset is high okay so once the reset is high the counting has been started so initially it is 0 1 and once it reaches 9 once it reaches 9 once it reaches 9 the count will be again fed to 0 okay so you can observe here once it reaches 9 it will be again moving to 0 okay so this is what we'll be trying to do using your Verilog code. Using Verilog code, it could be done. And uh, this is how your code looks like. So this is your counter code. Uh, as I was, as I used to tell you, you can keep your time scale either as nanoseconds or microseconds. Uh, so you can make the changes here at the top end. Okay, this can be just written as u. If I write it as u, it will be turned into nanoseconds. Okay, this all is your comments. Coming to the next thing here. Uh, so this is our main code, you can observe here. So the name of the module is BCD counter. And you have basically three inputs and outputs, count, clock, and reset. Clock and reset are nothing but your inputs. Count is your output. So as we are speaking of four bit BCD counter, so therefore the count would take four bits. So that's why we are taking it in the form of an array. So you can observe here, it is three down to zero. That means four bits, okay? And input is only two inputs. One is clock and another one is reset. So these two are my inputs. Next comes, whatever the inputs you have fed, the same thing must be also given in the form of the register. Why? Because we are using the behavioral description side. So when we use behavioral description style, you already know there are two important keywords which we use. One is register and another one is always net. So you can observe here, we are using the register. So inside register, we will be noting down all our outputs. So we have written our outputs here, that is three down to zero. And we have initialized the output to zero. You can observe the count is equal to four bit binary, four zeros, okay? So it means that what now? Initially, the value of our count is zero, so that no garbage values should be fed. Okay, next moving ahead, always at 
pose edge of clock pose edge is nothing but it is it means that positive edge of the clock so that means whenever the positive edge of the clock occurs your counter will start so as you already know in theory you might have studied there are two types of clocks one is positive edge and the other one is negative edge so we here we are using positive edge so whenever the positive edge of the clock occurs the counting must start going there next very important statement if reset equal to equal to 1 and this is nothing but or count equal to 9 that means what now if my reset is high uh, or if the count has reached 9 then the output must be initialized to 0 so very important friends these two statements will tell you when the counter should be reset your counting will be going on that means say for example you have a positive edge of the clock and you are let us assume that your reset is 0 then what will happen it will enter your always it will check is my reset high no then what it will do from zero it will be updated to one so this process continues until your reset becomes one or your count will be reaching nine once it reaches nine or one again the counter is reset to zero so this is all about your bcd counter so this is the main program whatever you can see here on the screen now this is the main program and to this we will be writing a test bench so this is how your test bench will look uh, as you already know uh, we have a, a tradition like the test bench we usually name it as stimulus okay module the name of my module is stimulus followed by we are written your clock and reset so what are my clock and reset friends these are nothing but my inputs so always remember inside your test bench we will be writing our inputs in the form of resistors okay and what is my output here the output here in the main program is count so the count has to be written in the form of a wire you can observe here the count has been written in the form of the wire next moving ahead we need to notify or we need to initialize to which module we are writing this test bench so that's why the name of the module the main module that is bcd counter must be same as what we are using here that means we are writing a test bench to the module bcd Counter. Okay, so please take care. When we will be writing the stimulus, the name of the main module must be same. That is whatever the name you are given here. You are given here is BCD counter. The same name must be mentioned here as well. Okay, moving ahead. This is the instance name. This is a user-defined name. You can give any name here. D1 is nothing but the first instance. That's what we have assumed. You can give your own name also. No issues here. Okay, followed by the inputs and outputs. Next thing. we need to initialize our clock inside the test bench so therefore initial we have used the key statement initial and we have initialized our clock to zero one bit one tick binary zero okay and there has to be some point wherein my reset must change from zero to one okay so therefore you can see here we have changed our reset from zero to one at some time instance 200 this is again user defined you can use it as per your convenience but make sure you give sufficient time so that the entire count occurs okay next when it should finish it should finish after 200 plus 300 say somewhere around 300 nanoseconds next very important thing friends in this always block the clock must be always negated you can observe here the clock is negated with a tidal mark so that you will get both positive pulse as well as negative pulse and we are given some time delay which is 10 nanoseconds as per our Finally, the display thing. This you have seen in, in all the previous uh, programs as well. So, display is used with the help of the keyword monitor, and you will be displaying all your inputs and outputs. Say so the first one is clock, the second one is reset, and the output is count. And why percentage B? You already know that B stands for nothing but your binary. Okay. So this is your whole uh, test bench code. Okay. so when so execute this i hope you know already know the procedure to execute i have been, i have been explaining it in all the previous videos as well just you need to click on this implementation this plus mark will be there in synthesis just expand it syntax after that you should go to simulation you should click on the main module which is nothing but your stimulus click on it then again this will be in the form of a plus like this that is simulator i sim simulator which you are using just expand it do the behavioral check syntax if there are any errors you will be seeing here in the console window inside this console window you can see all the uh, errors 
and finally you will be simulate you will be doing this simulate behavioral model so once you do this you will be getting your waveforms okay so this is how your waveforms will look fine so as you can observe here in the first case the all the variables are zero once your clock is high reset is zero the count is started so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 So once nine has reached, what we are written in the code? Once it reaches nine, or your reset is high, the count must be moved to zero. As you can observe here now, the count has moved to zero. Then after some time, you can also observe here the clock was zero. Here the reset is zero. You can observe here the reset is zero. Here also, when it is nine, the reset is zero. Once the reset becomes high, the whole count has been reduced to zero. Okay. So the whole count has been reduced to zero, and after some time. Say around 300 nanoseconds, it is stopping. Okay, so in the code you have also written when the reset must be high. You can see here, you have written after 200 nanoseconds the reset must be equal to one. So the same thing has happened here. After at, at 200 nanoseconds the reset has become high. So therefore your count has moved to zero. Okay, so this is all regarding your BCD counter. Even the code is there in the video. Just pause the video and you can copy down the code. You can practice it. Okay. so thank you for watching again we will meet in the next week